First, we need to get the equations in graphical form. The second one is fine. The first one needs a little work. <clears throat> so we just need to get y by itself. So we can subtract 3x and then divide by negative 2. And because we're dealing with an inequality, once we divide by that negative, what do we need to do? What's the sign? Yeah, so this will become now greater than, and then negative 3 plus 3 halves x. And then the bottom one, like I said, is fine, so it's ready to graph. And where is the y-intercept for the top one? It's at negative 3, slope. Slope, up 3, over 2. And then is this a solid or a dashed line? Since it says also or equal to, it's a solid line. And do we graph above or below? Above, right? It says all y values greater than all y values greater than the line. And so we shade above, and I'm just going to put that there for a moment so we can kind of see where it's going to be. So anything above the line. Guys, how do you, I, I still see students struggling on how to know where above and below is. So let's talk one more time about how you figure that out. And it's really easy. Pick a, pick a x coordinate. So I'm going to pick 2 x is 2. It, it doesn't have to be that one. Just pick an x coordinate. And then highlight values, y values. Like this says y, so we're looking at y values. We don't care about x values, we care about y values for this. So highlight y values on that line. Well, I have negative 3, I have 2, and I have 4. Which one is biggest? 4. 4. So that point tells you, hey, shade up here where it is bigger than the line, right? If you get stuck, use your head. Uh, don't just, like, memorize a formulaic approach. Like, think. Like, pause and be like, okay, what is actually bigger than the line? And so that would be above it this time. Okay, second one. What's our y-intercept on the second one? Five. Slope? Down one over four. Good. Down one over four. Dashed or solid? Dashed. This one's dashed. Where do we shade? Also above, right? So we're shading above the blue and above the pink. And so if we go just in the place where we need to see the shading, it's going to be up here. And of course, if our graph was bigger, we would have more to shade, but that gives you the idea of where to put it. Okay? So our solution set, or solution region, is all the points in that purple area. How many are there? A lot. A lot. Infinite, right? Somebody said infinite. So there are infinite points. How do you check if something is a solution. I'm going to move this 3x out of the way real quick. How do you check if something is a solution? For example, uh, we have our graph now, but if I had just asked you, is the point negative 1, uh, let's say 5, a solution, how would you check that? Plug the point if it's in the area. If we have the graph, we could plot the point and see if it's in the region, and if it is, then it's a solution. If we don't have the graph and don't want the graph, Can then what do we do? Plug in the point into where x and y is. Yeah. So three times negative one minus two times five, and then we're asking, is that less than or equal to six? Well, we get negative three minus ten, which is obviously less than six. Okay. So that one. shouldn't be in our region, actually. I mean, it 
it shouldn't be a solution. Oh, I know why. Duh, because we need to check it in both of these. I'm <laughs> glad that worked out. Uh, negative one fourth times negative one plus five. So we need to check it in both. So this is five and a quarter, right? Negative one fourth times negative one is positive one fourth plus five. And so that one is not true. Therefore, that's not a solution, right? Everybody good on that? Okay. So just, just like equations, in fact, I want to point this out because it was our first note. The very first one was, what is a solution? Now, we wrote to an equation, but also to a system of inequalities, right? Does it make, instead of saying the equation true, does it make the inequality true? But it's the same exact concept. Plug it back in if it makes that true, it's a solution. <clears throat> okay. Any questions on the varsity? Any of those that you would like to do? Or that you got wrong because you probably graphed it wrong but know how, you, how to do it? Like you probably did it right, just varsity was frustrating. Any of those you'd like to look at? One through ten. We're not going to do all ten of them. Pick one. All of them are bad. I just don't know. Huh? Okay. Do you want me to do it like it was supposed to be done on varsity, or do you want me to like pull it and just do it on a different screen? Do you care? I don't care. Okay. Uh, we did that one the other day. Uh, just as I scroll through, give me one that looks like it would be harder or whatever. Six. Six, sure. Mm -hmm. Since you're asking, let's do six. So I'm going to do it just as a graph. And hopefully that's not going to be a problem. And I'll be honest, if, you're have, if you feel like you're getting a concept and varsity is not working for you, meaning like, I swear I'm getting it, but when I put it in, it's marking it wrong, do it on paper and just show me. We can look at it. And if it is right, then, you know, I want you to know that you did it correctly and not feel like varsity is like, you're wrong, okay? Just bring it in and show me on paper, and that way you don't get discouraged. Okay, first thing we need to do is get all these graphable. So in this case, actually I do want to write this one out. So x minus y less than or equal to 5. Subtract x. Don't forget to leave the negative on the 5, or I mean on the y. And the reason why is because it matters at this step when we have to flip that inequality around. Okay, so there's the first one. Second one, we're going to get y less than or equal to 5 halves, and then minus x over 5. How should I write that second one to graph this a little more easily? Yeah, I would probably write it as instead of x fifths, which is okay, but I think some people would probably see it better that way. Okay. And then the last one is already graphable. Yeah. Which is the uh, one fifth to one half when you're dividing by the Oh, it is, yeah. Thank you. A lot of people are struggling still with these. And I don't know why. Like, I don't get it. But maybe just spend like 30 minutes and just create a, on your phone, create like a 30 second little um, sound bite that says, Vertical lines say x equals or x greater. Horizontal lines say y equals or y greater. And then just play it like 30 minutes in a row. There's no reason to not get this. It says x is a number. And the only way that can be true is if it's all the values on that line, on that x coordinate, right? That's the only. And so 
if you're struggling with that, it probably means you don't totally understand graphing yet. And so I need you to ask questions so I can help you get there. All right, let's go graph each of these. First one, 5 halves two is 2 and a half on the graph, minus a half x. So on varsity, I can see that this might have given you some issues because it didn't have the half in there, right, in terms of the scale of the x or y axis. So this would be a good one to just show me, be like, is this correct? And I would say, yes, varsity is just not giving you. Like, what if it's on varsity? Shouldn't there be a way to solve it? There is, yeah. It's just nothing's perfect, right? Anyways, you just have to zoom in and get the dot like perfect. Yeah. So we're going at two and a half, and then we're taking off a half each for each. There's two ways you can do this. You can go down a half and over one, or you can go down one over two. I think either way is fine, but I think because we're starting at a half, it might be easier to go down a half and then over one in this case. It's up to you. Solid or dashed on that one? That's solid. And where is this one shaded? So it says all y values below the line. Okay? So we'll keep in mind that that's shaded down here. Um, I guess maybe for this one we can shade everything. Okay, next one. Let's go with this one. Where does it start? Starts at negative 5, slope, up 1, over 1, so there's that other point. Solid or dashed? Solid. I think all of these are, yeah. Okay. There's that one, and then where is this one shaded? Above. All right, and then we, I already talked through what X kind of line X is, and so it's a vertical line, and on three. So solid line, let's do a better is it line. A negative three? Uh, negative three, yeah. I don't like that color. Can you guys see this green color? Yeah, you can see that, I think. It gets a little muddy down there. All right, and then which direction do we shade that one? So it's since it's vertical, this is the only one that's weird. You have to ask, where are x values greater than that line? And so now we're talking left and right, and this is the only case that that's an issue. Right. Right. Yeah, so it's going to be to the right. And then this one works out to where we can see the overlap fairly well, I think. And it's just in this triangle, and so maybe, maybe I'll just reshade this region is where all three overlap. So that's our solution region. Did that help whoever asked that? Yeah. How did the, well, any other questions on the inequality part? Okay. Guys, remember you can go back in even though this closed at 8, this is one thing I like about Varsity is you can go back in and try this 50 more times if you want to get that practice. And it doesn't matter to me super much if you can graph it on Varsity, but at least it gives you more problems to try. Right? So if you're struggling, go do that. Does it count toward the grade? Just don't do that. No. It's not toward that grade, but if you're better at it for the, like a test, then it would obviously be much better. Um, how did the system of equations go? So, that one, either of those two, how did those go? Oh, I actually did really well. Yeah? Now, there should have been no issues entering that as a answer, right? It was just entering numbers and hitting submit. Same with the second one. So look, do you guys remember how to do these? Multiply by what? 
Yep. Multiply by the LCD to clear that. And I'm not going to probably do this whole thing. Let's see how long it takes. But what is a good LCD for this one? 10. Okay, so just as a reminder, because I'm still seeing students do this, you're not going to do 50x plus uh, 40. You're not going to do that because this 2 is under there. If you write the 2, it's technically correct, but it's more work than you need to do for yourself. Okay, so I don't want you to do it that way. Um, where, where I think students are getting in trouble with this, to be honest, is trying to shortcut the work. And what ends up happening is, okay, so I want you to kind of visualize where we are at this point in this class. We've had a quiz, a number of people have come in to retake, which takes days of your time. And if you just take a 30 more seconds to write out more work and double check your work and plug it back in and make sure it's correct, you're saving yourself days of retaking, right? So don't be, a, don't like, get up here and think, oh, hey, if I, can, if I don't write this line, it will save me time or save me writing. Well, not necessarily, okay? So write it out like this. Uh, put that you're just adding, like, when I say adding, I don't mean plus. I mean you're just sticking the 10 next to the numerator, and that's it, right? Uh, of course, you can do the 10 times 1. There's no issue with that. Same thing over here, though. Just stick the 10 next to the numerator. first. And then hopefully your eyes will pick up, like I've, we've done this now a whole bunch of times, pick up this division first, and that you're really just distributing a 5. And over here it'll pick up that division, and really you're just distributing a 2. So this becomes 25x plus 20, and 14x plus 52, instead of making mistakes with the distribution. So, And then from there, we're good. Systems of equations um, in terms of three equations. So this one, how many of you got that correct? First try. Okay. So that's about half of you, and I know not everybody did it. So if you're getting it right first try, you're in a good place. Unless it's taking you like 45 minutes, right? You would want to pick up the pace a little. Otherwise, if you're getting it right first try, you're in a good place for doing this on the next assessment. Okay. So any other questions on that? Homework. Please, like even if it's just this one question and you feel like you need more practice, get on there and do two or three more of these systems of three equations to increase your pace and make sure you're getting the concept. And if you get stuck, just bring it in and ask for help. Like. We don't have advisory today, but every day at advisory you can come in. I don't care. It's totally fine. Just come in and I will help you. Same with lunch. Um, not every day after school works, but lunch and advisory does. So we're going to move on to the next topic, and that is absolute value. And we're going to be solving absolute value first to kind of stick with our solving theme. So grab your yellow sheet, just to have it ready. We're not writing it yet. And I want you to work with somebody near you on these. This is a question up here. So one, two, three, and four. So I'll give you a couple minutes. So absolute value is how far a number is from zero. Okay. We use the word magnitude sometimes for that. And it, there's this notion that it's always positive, and that's true. However, you need to be careful when you get into problems with absolute value. For example, this first one, it says evaluate, which just means give the value of. So what is the value of that first one? Yeah, it's negative 7. And so you might say, well, I thought absolute value is always positive, but, and that's true, but what is always positive? once you take the absolute value of the thing inside, right? 
but if it's mixed around with some other part of an expression or an equation, that doesn't necessarily mean your result will be positive. So be careful of distinguishing those. All right, here we're filling in greater than, less than, or equal to. So uh, this seems a little small. Okay, so is the absolute, what is the absolute value of negative 8? How far is negative 8 from 0? It's 8, so it's 8, right? So this first one says 8, and then how about the second side? That's negative 8, because we have negative absolute value, which means it's going to be a negative number. So this one says this, you should have put in a greater than, okay? That it is, 8 is greater than the absolute value made negative, okay? Uh, the same thing here, greater, C, what's the absolute value of negative 6? It's 6, and then of course this side is negative 6, so greater, D, what does that mean? There's no absolute value there. Well, what is negative negative? Positive, so this is really positive 15. Can you do the same thing with this? In other words... Is this negative negative? Oh, that makes a positive. No. No. Why not? Because it's an equation. There's no equation, but I think I know where you're going. Absolute value, guys, is a function. Like, it does something, right? Whereas parentheses just group stuff together. Like, here, look at this first and this second. Absolute value is actually a function, like square root, like squared, like cubed, like things that do things to numbers, they, they can't just, you can't just put that negative with the negative inside. That would be breaking the order of operations. So in order of operations, where, where does absolute value fall? All right, grouping, did someone say grouping? Yeah, it would fall kind of like a grouping symbol, right? Now, you're like, well, it doesn't parentheses. Well, still, it's not a absolute value is a function. Parentheses is not. So this is greater also. OK. Last one. This would be now a there we go. This would be an order of, order of operations problem with absolute value in it. There's still not an equation, right? We're not solving for a variable, but it's working through a series of steps to get the solution that we're looking for. So what do you do first? Yeah, we go inside the absolute value, and then in there, there happens to be a grouping symbol. So we do it first. So 4 minus 1, everything else stays the way it is right now. And when you do your absolute values, I tend to exaggerate them because I don't want to get them mixed up with 1. So make them a little taller. Sometimes when you read it in print, they're not that tall. And then it's like this, for example. Now, when you see it printed, it has a different shape than a 1 but not everybody writes that way, so exaggerate it a little bit. It's because I was talking too much, that's why. That happens a lot. I need to shut my mouth right and then talk. Yeah? So you do the parentheses before you distribute the three? No, okay, so he's asking, do you do the parentheses before you distribute? You don't distribute the three, it's an equation. No, neither thing is true. So. You can do parentheses first because there isn't a variable, or you can distribute first. Okay. Either one. And it'll come up the same. Right. Uh huh. Okay. Yeah. My recommendation would be to do the parentheses first, since there's just numbers. Like if this was an x, then we wouldn't. We'd have to distribute. But since it's all numbers, I would do parentheses first. Okay. Okay. Next. Yeah, now we're going to distribute, so 8, it's, it is distribute or just multiply in this case, so 8 minus 9.
And now, uh, do I multiply by 2? Well, negative 2? No, because again, absolute value is a function. We need to, to take the absolute value first. Now we'll get 14 minus 2, and probably a good idea to put that in parentheses now to show that it's multiplication, right? So the absolute value made that negative 1 a positive 1. Now we can multiply. So 14 minus 2, and we finally get 12. That's all review. Actually, most of what we're about to do is, I think. But how did that feel? Okay. Let's go write a few things down, and then we'll come back to some solving. So grab your yellow sheets. And we're going to start with what is absolute value, which you guys, Orion, I think it was you that said distance from zero. Was it you or Ryder? Okay. Come on. Why isn't this working? Angry. There we go. All right. So absolute value, distance from zero, and then magnitude. How many of you have taken physics? Okay. Wow, more of you need to take physics. It's good stuff. One person? It's fun. It's a good class. Yeah. It's like can't do algebra two. Why don't I take uh, physics? It's like story problem math. That's physics. So That's the worst math. math. But you get to learn a lot about the world around you. What did you yeah. say, writer? Nah. I like what it. I made it a lot better. Okay. Uh, you guys, so I'm bringing that up because magnitude is a word that you use when you talk vectors in physics or math, but magnitude is the size of something, so it doesn't have a sign. Okay? Next. The absolute value of a number is positive. I'm not usually going to have these pre-written. I just wrote these on the wrong slideshow one day, so I just figured I'd leave them. So the absolute value of a number is positive. Uh, just like we can't have a negative distance, <coughs> kind of goes together with the first point. So I'll treat it like parentheses in terms of order of operations. I want to add something to this. And that's And we're gonna say, but it's a function. It's not just grouping. You can use it as grouping to do stuff inside, but it's not grouping itself. So. Do make sure you put the symbol if you need it. Okay. Next is a reminder, and that is to get a single number inside before you take the absolute value. In other words, don't piecemeal something. It's not absolute value of 3 minus 4 is not 3 plus 4. Come back to that those steps in a second. Can you give you a quick example? Mm -hmm. We'll come back and write how. 
out to this. You guys remember solving absolute value equations at all? Most likely, it was like a day or two in Algebra 1, and you certainly never did it in Geometry, so if you don't remember, that's fine. It's been a long time. Usually, it's a concept that doesn't get a lot of attention. Actually, I do want to read this real quick. So this is a good foundation for what we're about to do. So first, look here. If absolute value of some number u is a, do you agree that u could be either the negative version or the positive version of that number? So here's what I'm saying. If I say the absolute value of x is 5, would you agree that that could be that x could be negative 5, or it could be positive 5. Right? Because they both give you the same absolute value once you take absolute value. So that drives the whole solution process for absolute values, which is this. You have to consider both cases. You have to consider the negative and the positive case. Okay? So let's go through these three examples. In fact, I do want you to write these down. So a says absolute value of x equals 8. So just write with me. And we'll just go through these. So it's kind of like what I just said. So what could x be? Okay, so what we're going to do is split this. It's a lot like solving a quadratic where you have two potential solutions. So we're going to split it into the negative and positive case. So that could mean that this is negative x equals 8 or positive x equals 8. It could be both. Why negative x? Well, that number inside of there could be negative 8, right? And still give us an absolute value of 8. So how do you get x by itself? Like if I said solve this. We would divide by negative 1, and we would get x equals negative 8, just like we thought. And of course, this other side, x is just 8. So we have two potential solutions, or two, two solutions most of the time. So again, the negative case is, hey, whatever's in there could be the negative version. The positive case, whatever's in there is the positive version. Okay, next one. It says this, absolute value of y, and there is no significance to the letters, it's just examples. Okay, tell me about solving that one. What do we do? Okay, he said it's either 6 or negative 6. Do you agree? Corbin, you agree? Okay, you're you're getting there. Good job, you guys. Why is it no solution? Okay. Because there's not a thing outside of the uh, absolute value. Yeah. Uh, can an absolute value of something be a negative value? So this one has issues from the very beginning. Okay, last one. How about that one? Let me bring it up so you can see it. Yeah, we could split it off, but my question is, if we if we do that, are these two different? No. Yeah. So these are not any different, so it's just z equals zero. In other words, there's no negative zero, right? So you basically have three situations where you're going to have two solutions when you have an absolute value that is a positive non-zero number, 
when you have zero, then it's just one solution. And then if it's absolute value equals a negative, no solution. That doesn't happen. So let's see this work with an actual equation. And so go ahead and write this as an example. No, don't treat, well, in terms of order of operations, but don't treat it like parentheses. It's a function, right? Yeah. Okay. So, what we want to do is get this absolute value by itself, okay? So, we're going to go get rid of the 5. How do you get rid of that 2? Yeah, it says two times something, right? Don't worry about the something. It just says two times it. So you're going to divide. Do not distribute. This is not parentheses, so don't distribute. Divide both sides by two and leave the absolute value. Okay, once we get it to this point, this is when we split off and do the positive-negative case, okay? Because whatever x minus 7 is, it could be negative or positive 2 to give us 2 when we take the absolute value. Okay? So you have two options here. I guess it depends how you think of it. So I'll show you what I'm going to probably have you do, but we'll try it both ways. So negative case, positive case. Negative case, this is really what we're thinking. Whatever is inside of there could be negative 2. Why? What is the absolute value of negative 2? It's 2. It's still 2, right? So whatever's in there could be negative 2, or whatever's in here could be positive 2. Now we solve like normal. So add 7. And we'll get x equals 5. Over here, add 7. And x equals 9. So let's check. How do we check? Do we plug those numbers back into x? Just yeah. We could go here and just prove that at least this middle line is true. Like 5 minus 7 is negative 2, but what's the absolute, absolute value of negative 2? 2. It's 2. 9 minus 7 is 2, but the absolute value of that is 2. We could also take it all the way back to the original and plug it in here and make sure that it equals 9, which it will, okay? But do you see how we had to check both versions? Because it's true both ways, okay? Let's do one more. Uh, let's see, do we have any variety? Nope. Let's do one of these. So go ahead and write that one down. Make sure you get it written down. So still we want to get the absolute value by itself, so we'll subtract 9 first. Yeah. 
now it. Yeah, good. Good job, Robert. Sage, what were you going to say? Come on. All right, so we're going to set up the negative and positive. Now, what does that look like in this case? Technically, the negative and positive, in this case, we have a negative 5. So is, this, is there a solution? No. No. Neither the negative or positive case will work. Because we're trying to say the absolute value of something is negative, which we know is not true. And I guess if you're wanting your example to show why, maybe make an arrow to that negative sign right there. Uh, let's see. Let's go right about this. Alright, so first step. Tell you what. Let's talk through the steps and then we'll come write this blue thing on the right or on the left. So use the usual algebra to get the absolute value or values by itself. Like we could have an absolute value on both sides. So that's add, subtract, multiply, divide, that kind of thing. Then, again, we're going to, I'll talk you through this blue note over here in a second. Okay, then you're going to separate your work into a negative case and positive case. I think it's a good visual to draw the line down the middle like I was showing you. Kind of gets you into a solid approach to how to do these. that into your notes as kind of a structure. Um, this, there is no significance to having negative on the left or right. It doesn't matter. Just put it where you want. Just don't forget to do it. I'm going to erase this and change it. So step three. Set the negative side equal to the negative Set the negative side equal to the negative value of the constant and the positive to the positive value. Okay. Again, we'll come back to the blue in a minute. OK, 
Okay? Solve each case for your solutions. And then finally, remember if it's absolute value of something equals a negative, then there is no solution. So do take note of not forcing that to be a solution. If we did that as an answer in like if that's just something that we have to write out to know solution. Yes, you do. Yeah. So he asked if you got some situation like this, like the example we just did. Yes, you need to write no solution. All right, on the left. Guys, I do want you to understand the concept here, that what's inside the absolute value can be the negative or positive version, and so you need to account for both when solving. And so there's that little, and it's okay to write this since I'm having you put it on your notes, but please do write it so you get the concept here that we have a negative and a positive version that give the same absolute value. So I'll show you how to input this into your graphing calculator and how you can see solutions of these equations on there, okay? So, graphing calculator, the TI, in order to do absolute value, there's, there's not just a quick button on here for it, but it isn't too bad to find. And so if you go second, and then the zero button, above the zero button is catalog, it has the catalog of all the functions that the calculator does. And the first one, ABS is your absolute value. So if you hit enter on that, then it sets up your absolute value. Okay? So first thing I want you to notice, just put an X in there and hit graph. And that's what the absolute value function looks like. It's a V. Why would it look like a V? Yeah, whatever you plug in, it's going to return the positive value. And so if I plug in positive 3, it gives me 3. But if I plug in negative 3, it also gives me 3. So it's going uh, up, I guess, as you go left and right. Yeah. Where's the X? The X is this button right next to the green one. If you just hit it once, that's your X. So that, huh? So second is 0 and then what? And then just the first option is ABS. Second zero ABS. Okay, back to y equals, back to y equals, and just clear that out. So this one that we just solved, this was one of your examples, we got 5 and 9 for our two solutions. Okay, so we're going to treat this like y on the left, y equals this one, and y2 equals 9. We're going to treat it like two different functions and graph both. So back to your graph, y1, we're going to say 2, and then absolute value of x, I think it was minus 7, so x minus 7, okay, arrow out of your absolute value, and then hit plus 5. So that is saying, hey, here's a function, it's moved around from the one I just showed you, but it's going to look like a V. Okay, our other one is just the horizontal line 9. And when we're graphing to solve, what are we looking for? What are we looking for? Say it. The solution, but what does it look like on a graph? Say it. It's the point, or points, in this case, of intersection. So when we hit graph, uh, so you can see it's kind of scooted over. But do you see two points of intersection? I'm going to move my graph up so I can see it better. There we go. Do you see those two points of intersection? 
Okay, let's trace, and you could go, remember second trace is, and then five is how you actually find the point of intersection. That's how you solve graphically. Um, just for the sake of time, I'm just going to show you. You see how x equals five, that was one of our solutions. And then if I arrowed to the other point of intersection, right, somewhere in there, there's our nine, right? It's not snapping right to it, but that's the nine. So it's showing our two points of intersection. Okay. What does the absolute value graph look like? A V with the vertex on. The normal vertex is on what? That's the point, the pointy part. Where is it resting normally? On zero. Okay. All right, here's the, the problems that you're going to do on OpenStax. 2.7 and use your graphing calculator to check these get in the habit of doing that you'll be better off 